Hi friends, you're watching episode 52 of The Daily Decrypt, independent members of LTV Network. I'm your host Amanda, and today's episode is brought to you by Newbits. Preply is a service which matches tutors with those who want to learn. Over 43,000 learners have found in-person or Skype tutors using Preply, and the service now accepts Bitcoin for payment and offers it for payouts. Tutors get to set their own prices, and learners are guaranteed a free lesson if they are not happy with their first pick of tutor. The most in-demand tutoring sessions are with native English speakers, as Preply's global audience contains many who are looking to practice their English in real time. Today, both the BTC and Bitcoin subreddits are plastered with posts from dissatisfied users mostly airing their grievances about Bitcoin's governance, or perhaps lack thereof. Evan Duffield, lead developer of Dash, says he believes that competition is the answer to cryptocurrency woes. Evan explains these views in the newest episode of the up-and-coming podcast Liberty Entrepreneurs. The interview is 13 minutes long and can be found linked in the description section. Bitfury has announced that they will be offering a faster, more powerful Bitcoin mining ASIC chip come 2016. As Bitcoin mining continues to become more specialized, many claim that it also becomes more centralized. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be decentralized or distributed or centralized? And does it even matter? These questions and more are explored in a new video by the OK Turtles Foundation, called Deconfusing Decentralization. It's a quick view at five minutes and is linked in the description below. The question is asked, can cryptocurrency compete with fiat monies? More recent headlines, however, are asking the question, can banks compete at all? 10% of bankers lost their jobs in 2015, and the number of physical bank branches hasn't been lower since the 1960s. While the popularity of online mobile payment services means that not as many people open traditional bank accounts, the payment services themselves still use the legacy banking system as a backbone. Whether mobile payments are a stepping stone to a bankless society or not remains to be seen. All else equal, why would you ever trade one millibit for one millibit? Well, if you're a player of Spells of Genesis, it might be because you're trading an Ascian card for a Counterlord card. The beta stage Spells of Genesis issues its in-game playing cards via its own counterparty tokens, called Bit Crystals. This means dragons, warlocks, and princesses are all being actually traded on the Bitcoin blockchain on a regular basis. Spells of Genesis is accepting more beta-level players, and you can find the sign-up in the description. Today's episode has been brought to you by Newbits, which is run by a team of people who've cleverly issued the crypto equity token called NewShares to enable the voting on monetary policy to keep one Newbit pegged to one US dollar. Learn more at newbits.com. And if you're watching on the LTV network, today's magic word is spontaneous. And a happy announcement to those of you who've been asking if we have a podcast. Thanks to the folks at LTV network, Every Daily Decrypt episode is now being issued along with an audio podcast, which you can subscribe to via the LTB RSS feed. Enjoy! And you just have